डर होना चाहिए और वो दिल में होना चाहिए और वो दिल आपको उनका नए सामने वाले का होना चाहिए मैं आई कम वो क्या इतना बड़ा वेलकम है डियर एयर स्टूडेंट्स टू दियर सारिया नोट्स कोचिंग क्लासेस Today we are going to study the the AS topics for NEET UG Biology 2024. We are going to start our AS topics with the first and most chapter, Living World. Right? Biology. What is biology? Bio means life. Logi means study. It's nothing but biology is study of living organisms and their life processes. Right? How many types of living organisms are there? Right? We have plants. We have animals, and we have microorganisms or microbes, which can be seen only through microscope. Right? The study of plants is known as botany. The study of plants is known as botany, right? Who is the father of botany? Theophrastus. Theophrastus is the father of botany, right? Study of plants is called as botany. Then, what is the study of animals called as zoology, right? Zoology. Study of animals known as zoology. We can see zoological park, right? When the animals are kept under the human care. Animals, zoo, zoology. Study study of animals is called as zoology, right? Who is the father of zoology? Aristotle. Aristotle is called as the father of zoology, right? Microorganisms, microbes. What are the microbes? First one is bacteria, right? So the study of bacteria is called as bacteriology. Who is the father of bacteriology then? Louis Pasteur. Louis Pasteur is called as the father of bacteriology. And one more scientist is there, known as Robert Koch. That Robert Koch is considered as the father of modern bacteriology. Modern bacteriology after the study of Mycobacterium tuberculosis TB bacteria, right? Then after bacteria, what you have? Fungi, right? Fungi, right? What is the study of fungi called as mycology? So the study of fungi is called as mycology. Who is the father of mycology then? Enrich. Anton D. Barry. Who is the father of mycology then? Henrich Anton D. Barry. Right? Then, what are the other microorganisms which can, which can be seen only through microscope? Viruses. The study of viruses is called as virology. Right? Study of viruses is called as virology. Then, who is the father of virology? Martinus Wilde Bittering. M. W. Martinus Wilde Bittering is considered as the father of Biology, right? So that's who is the father of all the subject microbiology, the study of microorganisms, these bacteria, fungi, viruses, together known as microbiology, right? Study of microorganisms is known as microbiology. Right? Study of microorganisms known as microbiology. Who is the father of microbiology? Then the father of microbiology will be Anthony von Leeuwenhoek. Right? Anthony von Leeuwenhoek, father of microbiology. In the plants, we have in the plants, we have algae right majority of the photosynthesis on the earth occurring due to the algae right algae so the study of algae known as phycology the study of algae is known as phycology then what we have bryophytes bryophytes study of bryophytes is known as what bryology then study of bryophytes is known as biology, right? Study of algae phycology, study of bryophytes, bryology. Do you know these bryophytes of the plant kingdom, plantae, right, are known as amphibians of the plant kingdom. What they are known as? Amphibians of the plant kingdom. Right? These bio bryophytes are known as amphibians of the plant kingdom. This is your assertion. Then what is the reason for it? Because bryophytes, they are the first land plants. They live in the marshy areas, but they require water for fertilization. Hence, they are known as amphibians of the plant kingdom, right? Bryophytes. Then what we have? Teridophytes. Right? We have teridophytes. The study of teridophytes is known as teridology. Study of teridophytes is known as teridology. Now, these teridophytes are known as reptiles or vascular cryptogams. 
of the plant kingdom. Right? Vascular cryptocams are reptiles of the plant kingdom. Reason? Because they possess for the first time, right, vascular tissues. That is xylem for the water conduction and toem for the food conduction. So they contains true vascular tissue, xylem and toem for the first time in the plant kingdom, right? We have in the plants gymnosperms, such as cycas, pinus, etc. Then we have in the plants, lastly, angiosperms. Angiosperms, nothing but flowering plants. Flowering plants, right? Which are producing flowers and fruit. So these are the basic flows of our biology. Bio means life, no means study, biology means study of living organisms and their living processes. Different types of living organisms are there. Plants, study of plants known as botany. Father of botany is known as Theophrastus. We have algae in the plants, study of algae phycology. We have bryophytes in the plants, study of bryophytes known as bryology. Assertion, bryophytes are known as the amphibians of the plant kingdom. Reason, bryophytes are the first land plants which lives in the marshy areas, but they need water for fertilization, right? Then pteridophytes, pteridophytes, study of pteridophytes known as pteridology. Pteridophytes, assertion known as reptiles of the plant kingdom, or vascular cryptogons of the plant kingdom. Reason, they possess true vascular tissues for the first time, that is xylem and phloem. Xylem for the water production and flowing for the food conduction, right? Then we have gymnosperms, cycas and pinus examples. Then we have angiosperms, that is flowering plants, which produces flowers and fruits. Now the another living organisms are animals, right? The study of animals known as zoology and the father of zoology is Aristotle. Remaining microorganisms, microbes, smallest living organisms, which can be seen through microscope, right? <clears throat> Light microscope, electron microscope, right? Bacteria, bacteria, study of bacteria known as bacteriology. Father of bacteriology is Louis Pasteur. If the question is about father of modern bacteriology, then the answer will be Robert Koch. Fungi, the study of fungi is called as mycology. Who is the father of mycology? Henrik Anton D. Barry. Virus, study of viruses known as virology, and the father of virology is right Martinus Willem M. W. Bijering. The whole this whole bacteria fungi is together called as microorganisms, microbes, and the study of microorganisms known as microbiology, and the father of microbiology is Anthony Von Leeuwenhoek. Right? In the microorganisms, we have another parasites, right? So the study of parasites known as parasitology. Study of parasites known as parasitology. Mostly the parasites are belonging to the protozoans of the protista kingdom, right? So these are about the first slide. Let us proceed with the next slide. Biology is the science of life forms and living processes. Biology is the story of life on earth. Biology is the story of evolution of living organisms on earth. Living organisms share similarities among themselves both horizontally and vertically. That is, all living organisms, present, past and future, are linked to one another by the sharing of the common genetic material but to varying degrees. Ansmeyer is considered as the Darwin of the 20th century and Ansmeyer pioneered the current definition of biological species, means Ansmeyer defined the biological species. Ansmeyer awarded three prizes in his career, triple crown of biology. As the Ansmeyer is considered as the Darwin of the 20th century, the word century is used in the game of cricket, right? So the mnemonic to remember the triple crown of biology in the chronological order is BIC, Board of International Cricket. B for the Belgian Prize in 1983, I for the International Prize for Biology in 1994, and C for the Crawford Prize in 1999. Yes, my dear students, what it says, living organisms shares similarities both horizontally and vertically. It means this point highlights the importance of common ancestry. Common ancestry, right? This point, living organisms share similarities both horizontally and vertically between them. This point highlights the importance of common ancestry. Example, horizontally, the example, I think you have to female A, female B, right? They are the sisters, right? Right now, social media is famous, chinky, winky, right? They look alike, they share similarities horizontally, right? Same generations. But whereas, example of vertically is person A and person B. I think you have seen the blockbuster movie of India, Bad India, Bahubali, right? So father is Mahendar Bahubali and son is Amrinder Bahubali, right? So they look alike, same Prabhas, right? So they share the similarities vertically. Like father, like son, right? Like sister, like sister. So Chinky Minky is an example of horizontal similarities, but whereas 
Mahendra Bahubali and Amrathar Bahubali is an example of vertical similarities. So living organisms share similarities both horizontally and vertically, highlighting the importance of common ancestry. Right? Now we have studied about the scientist Ernst Mayer, right? Ernst Mayer. Right? He born in 1904 and died in 2004. He survived 100 years, right? 100 years, that is century. And Ernst Mayer is considered as the Darwin of the 20th century. Hans Mayer is considered as the Darwin of the 20th century. As this word century is used in the game of a cricket, right? The word century is used in the game of a cricket. If such a general has made 100 runs, then it is the century, right? So, Hans Mayer is considered as the Darwin of the 20th century, and Hans Mayer has awarded three prizes in his career, known as Triple Crown of Biology. What it is known as? Triple Crown of Biology. How will you remember this Triple Crown of Biology in the chronological order, right? First prize, second prize, third prize. First prize is Belgian prize, right? You just seen in the previous slide. Second prize is international prize for biology, right? And the third prize is Crawford prize, right? How will you remember the mnemonic B I C Board of International Cricket? As the Hans Mayer is considered as the Darwin of the 20th century, the word century is used in the game of cricket. So the mnemonic will remember the triple crown of biology is BIC in the chronological order. First prize is Bazan Prize, I for International Prize for Biology, and C for Profit Prize, board of international cricket, right? And Hans Mayer has pioneered the current definition of biological species. Means Hans Mayer defined the biological species. So this is what about the scientist of Hans Mayer. Now we are going to study about the characteristics of living organisms in the next slide. Yes, my dear students. Now we are going to study about the characteristics of living organisms, right? What are those? Growth, reproduction, metabolism, cellular organization, consciousness, right? Replication. Emergence, etc. So these are the characteristics of living organisms, right? So these are the characteristics of living organisms. What are those? Growth, reproduction, metabolism, cellular organization, consciousness, replication, and emergence, and etc. Right? Let us study about the growth in the next slide. Increase in mass and increase in number of individuals are twin characteristics of growth. In living organisms, growth is from inside by cell divisions. In unicellular organisms, growth and reproduction are both inclusive events. That is, reproduction is synonymous with growth in the unicellular organisms. Example, bacteria, amoeba, unicellular algae. In multicellular organisms, growth is by cell divisions. In plants, growth is throughout their lifespan continuously due to the presence of apical meristems. In animals, growth is only up to certain age. However, lost tissues can be regenerated with the help of cell divisions. In non-living organisms, growth is from outside, that is, accumulation of materials on the surface. Right? So, growth is nothing but increase in size, that is, hypertrophy, increase in size, that is, hypertrophy, and increase in number of individuals, or increase in number of cells, that is, hyperplasia. Right? Hypertrophy, increase in the size, hyperplasia, increase in the number of cells. So, increase in the size and increase in the number of individuals. Are the twin characteristics of growth. Are the twin characteristics of growth, right? In living organisms, growth is from inside. Growth is from inside in living organisms by cell divisions. In unicellular organisms, in unicellular organisms such as bacteria, right? Then unicellular algae, then amoeba. Reproduction. Is synonymous with growth, right? So both growth and reproduction, both growth and reproduction are inclusive events, right? They are inclusive events. They are synonymous. In the unicellular organisms, reproduction is synonymous with growth. Growth and reproduction are both inclusive events in the unicellular organisms, right? But whereas growth in the non-living organisms Growth in the non-living organisms 
is from outside that is accumulation of accumulation of materials on the surface right growth of mountain growth of rocks so this is all about the core growth in the multicellular organisms growth in the multicellular organisms such as plants it is continuous growth is continuous in the plants growth is continuous in the plants throughout the life time throughout the life span right why because of the presence of apical meri stems because of the presence of apical meri stems but whereas in the animals it is only up to certain age it is only up to certain age however the lost tissues can be regenerated with the help of cell division so this is all about our growth right you can get a question on the growth in the statement wise right you are going to get four statements out of which you, you need to identify the correct ones or incorrect ones growth increase in size and increase in number of individuals are the twin characteristics of growth growth in the living organism is from inside of the cell divisions in the unicellular organisms such as bacteria unicellular algae and amoeba reproduction is synonymous with growth that is growth and reproduction both are inclusive events right in the multicellular organisms such as plants growth is continuous throughout their lifespan why because of the presence of apical meri stems but whereas in animals growth is only up to certain age however lost tissues can be regenerated with the help of cell divisions in the non living organisms growth is from outside that is accumulation of the materials on the surface that is growth of the rock and mountain right let us study about the reproduction in the next slide the production of progeny possessing features similar to those of parents is called as reproduction sexual reproduction is by gametes fertilization required both the parents male and female asexual reproduction by spores required only single parent by binary fission and the following ones budding can be seen in sponges hydra yeast the mnemonic to remember this our body is shy s for sponges h for hydra y for yeast fragmentation can be seen in fungi filamentous algae protonema of moses true regeneration can be seen in planaria is a flat form sterile worker honey bees hinny mule infertile human couples could not reproduce hence reproduction cannot be taken as defining feature of living organisms right but so reproduction right asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction sexual reproduction is two parents male and female parents the help of gametes fertilization asexual reproduction single parent is enough right we can see budding where we can see budding budding can be seen in sponges right hydra and is sponges hydra and is ab isko kaisa yaad rakhenge apan the mnemonic is shy the mnemonic is shy our body is shy सुहाग रात है घूंघट उठा रहा हूं मैं कैसा रहता दीवाने एक्टिंग ना खाली बेकार के शर्माने का राइट तो अवर बडी इज शाई हाउ टू रिमेम्बर बडी इज शाई एस पर स्पॉन्जेस हेल्स पर हाइड्रा एंड वाई फॉर इज तो बडिंग कैन बी सीन इन स्पॉन्जेस हाइड्रा एंड इज फ्रैगमेंटेशन कैन बी सीन इन फंगल फिलामेंटस एल्गे एंड प्रोटोनिम ऑफ द मॉसेस वी हैव सीन अर्लियर इन द प्रीवियस स्लाइड राइट another important point here is true regeneration true regeneration can be seen in where planaria planaria is a flat worm planaria is a flat worm now it is how to remember this true, true regeneration can be seen in planaria at the current situation our media national media can do anything for the trp right so the word is trp true regeneration can be seen in planaria right so this is all about our reproduction some of the uh, living organisms such as hinny mule sterile worker honey bee and infertile human couples could not reproduce right for that reason growth and reproduction are the characteristics of living organism but both growth and reproduction cannot be taken as defining features of living organisms but i can assure you this metabolism this cellular organization and this consciousness these three features of the living organisms are the defining features of living organisms right what are the defining features of living organisms these three metabolism cellular organization and consciousness the three characteristics of living organisms can be taken as defining features of living organism metabolism the sum total of all the biochemical reactions occurring in our body is called as metabolism metabolism is equal to anabolism plus catabolism photosynthesis is an example of anabolism respiration is an example of catabolism metabolism is a defining feature of all living organisms without an exception consciousness is equal to sensitivity plus irritability Sensitivity is ability to sense the surrounding environment. Irritability is ability to show response to the environmental stimuli, either externally or internally, physically, chemically, or biologically. Photo period affects reproduction in seasonal breeders, both plants and animals. 
Hence, most obvious and technically complicated feature of all living organisms is the consciousness. Human being is the only organism who is aware of himself, that is, has self-consciousness. All living phenomena are due to underlying interactions. These interactions result in emergent properties at a higher level of organization. Overall, the defining features of living organisms are metabolism, cellular organization, consciousness. But metabolism is a defining feature of living organisms without exception. Now, the number of species that are known and described ranges between 1.7 to 1.8 million, that is 17 to 18 lakhs. This is now nice biodiversity. So, metabolism is nothing but the sum total of all the biochemical reactions occurring in our body, inside our body is called as metabolism, right? Metabolism is the sum total of all the biochemical reactions that is occurring in our body is known as metabolism. The sum total of all the biochemical reactions occurring in our body is known as metabolism. Metabolism is nothing but anabolism plus catabolism. Anabolism example is photosynthesis. Right, catabolism example is respiration. Right, done. So, metabolism is a defining feature of living organisms, right, without exception. You can get a question like this Which of the following is a defining feature of living organisms without exception? The answer is metabolism, right? Then, cellular organization. Cellular organization is the defining feature of life forms, right? Then, what is consciousness? Consciousness is nothing but Consciousness is nothing but sensitivity plus irritability. Sensitivity plus irritability. What is sensitivity? The ability to sense the surrounding environment, right? The ability to sense the surrounding environment is known as sensitivity and the ability to show response to the environmental stimuli, either physical stimuli, chemical stimuli or biological stimuli, the response will be said, right? The ability to sense the surrounding environment is known as sensitivity. The ability to show the response to the environmental stimuli is known as irritability. So that is consciousness, right? So photopinot will affect both the seasonal breeders, plants and animals and our human beings our human beings are the only living organisms which are self-conscious. They show self-consciousness, right? They show self-consciousness. What is happening there inside their body? Not only they sense the surrounding environment, they can also sense what is happening inside their body. Such as you are you are you are you are you some weakness is there, temperature burn off now, right? That is what is self-consciousness, right? All the living phenomena are due to underlying interactions and these interactions result in the emergence in the higher level of organization. So this is all about your characteristics of living organisms, right? Growth, reproduction, metabolism, cellular organization, consciousness, self duplication, emergence are the characteristics of living organisms. Among these all, metabolism, cellular organization and consciousness are the defining features of living organism in which metabolism is a defining feature of living organisms without exception, right? Without exception. Metabolism is a defining feature of living organisms without exception. Cellular organization is a defining feature of life forms, but whereas consciousness is nothing but sensitivity, plus irritability, ability to sense the surrounding environment is known as sensitivity, ability to show the response to the environmental stimuli is known as irritability. Our human beings are the only living organisms which are self conscious, right? So, this is all about your characteristics of living organisms. How many species are known and described till now? 1.7 to 1.8 million means 17 to 18 lakhs of species of living organisms all the plants animals everything i got so 17 to 18 lakhs 1.7 to 1.8 million species are known and described till date this is nothing but biodiversity this is nothing but biodiversity we will discuss about the biodiversity in detail in the biodiversity chapter lecture okay now we will proceed to the next slide systematics derived from the latin word systema means the systematic arrangement of organisms the key part of systematics is taxonomy. The four processes are the basic to taxonomy. They are characterization, identification, nomenclature, classification. Characterization, plant species or animal species show specific characters to themselves. Identification whether the plant or the animal species we are seeing either early identified or a new organisms discovered. That is identification. Can be done directly by the help of herbarium and indirectly with the help of taxonomic key. Nomenclature, binomial nomenclature mostly followed and classification. Classification is the process by which anything is grouped into convenient categories and some easily observable characters. The scientific term for these categories is taxa, singular taxon. Each category is a taxon, represents a rank and is a unit of classification. Taxonomy is the process of classification of living organisms into different taxa based on the characteristics. 
all the taxonomic categories togetherly constitute the taxonomical hierarchy. There are seven obligatory taxonomical categories in the taxonomical hierarchy. The mnemonic to remember these seven obligatory taxonomic categories is King's DP shows class of genius species. ICBN stands for International Code for Botanical Nomenclature. ICBN gives guidelines for naming plants. ICZN stands for International Code for Zoological Nomenclature. ICZN gives guidelines for naming animals. The process of naming a newly identified plant or animal with a standard universally accepted scientific name or biological name under the guidelines given by the ICBN for plants or ICZN for animals respectively is called as nomenclature. If the scientific name or biological name consists of two components or two words that is binomial, then it is called as binomial nomenclature or binomial nomenclature. Linnaeus popularized the binomial nomenclature. Linnaeus is the father of taxonomy. Linnaeus is the founder of modern systematics. And Linnaeus book is Systema Naturae, 10th edition. So basically Linnaeus is the father of taxonomy and he popularized the binomial nomenclature. Carolus Wall, Linnaeus is a scientist, right? He is considered as the father of taxonomy, right? And he is considered as the founder of modern systematics, right? Systematics derived from the Latin word that is systema. It means arrangement of living organisms in a systematic manner that is systematic arrangement of living organisms right now Linnaeus Carolus von Linnaeus wrote a book published a book by the name Systema Naturae Systema Naturae right the 10th edition of the Systema Naturae Right, he used the word systema from the systematics, right? And here, Carolus von Linnaeus popularized the binomial nomenclature. Carolus von Linnaeus is considered as the father of taxonomy. He is a founder of modern systematics. The word systematics derived from the Latin word systema means systematic arrangement of living organisms. And he published a book by the name Systema Naturae, 10th edition, right? And Linnaeus popularized the binomial nomenclature. Taxonomy, this taxonomy is a key part of systematics. Taxonomy is the key part of systematics. As you have seen in the previous slide, four basic processes characterization, right? Then identification. Characterization means every species, plant species or animal species shows their specific character. Identification means what we are seeing, the specimen of plant or animal. Either it is already discovered earlier or it is newly discovered. That process is known as identification. Identification can be done directly with the help of herbarium, right? Directly with the help of herbarium and indirectly with the help of taxonomic key. Indirectly with the help of taxonomic key, right? The third process is if the specimens, what we are seeing, that the species of plant or animal, what we are seeing is newly identified, newly discovered, then that specimen should be named, right? The process of naming is known as nomenclature. After nomenclature, the last and fourth process is classification. So these three, classification. So these four processes are the basic processes to taxonomy, right? Characterization, identification, nomenclature, and classification. So the taxonomy is nothing but classification of living organisms into different categories based on the characteristics, right? Now we are going to study about the nomenclature, right? The process of naming a newly identified plant specimens, right? What it is? The process of naming a newly identified species, whether it is plant or animal, right? With a standard universally accepted scientific or biological name, right? The process of naming a newly identified species, either it is a plant or animal with a standard universally accepted scientific or biological name under the guidelines under the guidelines provided by ICBN or ICZN. ICBN for plants and ICZN for animals, right? 
is called as nomenclature. The process of naming a newly identified species, either a plant or an animal, with a standard universally accepted scientific or biological name under the guidance provided by the for plants or ICDN for animals, is called as nomenclature. If that scientific name or biological name consisting of two words or two components, that is binomial, then that process is known as binomial or binominal nomenclature. Right, binomial nomenclature or binomial nomenclature. So these binomial nomenclature was popularized by Linnaeus. Right? What does this ICBN stand for? ICBN stand for International Code for Botanical Nomenclature. ICBN stands for International Code for Botanical Nomenclature, providing the guidelines for naming the plant species. What does this ICZN stand for? ICZN stands for International Code for Zoological Nomenclature. International Code. For zoological nomenclature, I see Zen stand for international code for zoological nomenclature that provides the guidance for naming the animal species, right? So the process of naming a newly identified species, either a plant or animal, with a standard universally accepted scientific or biological name under the guidance provided by ICBN for plants, international code for botanical nomenclature, or ICBN for animals, international code for zoological nomenclature, is called as nomenclature. If that biological name and scientific name consisting of two words, that is two components, binomial, then the process is known as binomial nomenclature or binomial nomenclature. These binomial or binomial nomenclature was popularized by Linnaeus, right? So, what are those guidelines provided by the ICPM or ICZN for naming a plant and animal species? Let us see in the next slide. ICBN guidelines for binomial nomenclature. Scientific name or biological name should be in Latin origin and printed in italics form. Why? Because Latin is a dead language. Binomial shows two words, components. First word, generic name genus is a noun and always starts with a capital letter. Second word, specific epithet species is an adjective, always starts with a small letter. Example, scientific name of mango is Mangifera indica, generic name is Mangifera, specific epithet is indica. When scientific name is handwritten, then both the generic name and specific epithet are separately underlined to indicate the Latin origin. Name of the author or scientist who described the plant species for the first time and named it for the first time can be written at the end of the scientific or biological name that is after specific epithet in an abbreviated form. Example, Mangifera indica lin. ICBL guidelines. What are those? Let us see. The first and most one is the scientific name or biological name should be in Latin origin. Why Latin origin data? Because Latin is a dead language. And if they are printed, they are printed in italic form. Right? They are printed in italic form. Then the second one is this scientific name or biological name consisting of two words or two components known as binomial, right? That binomial, first word or first component is genetic name, also known as genus, and it is a noun and always starts with a capital letter, right? First word is a genetic name, genus is a noun and always starts with a capital letter. Whereas, second word is specific epithet known as species is an adjective and always starts with a small letter, right? That biological name and scientific name consisting of two words or two components known as binomial. The first word is generic name, genus is a noun and always starts with a capital letter. But where a second word is a specific epithet species is an adjective, always starts with a small letter. Let us see with an example of scientific name of mango. Right? What is the scientific name of mango? Mangifera indica. You see, Mangifera is the genetic name starting with a capital letter M and the indica is the specific epithet starting with a small letter I, right? Now what is the next point here? When handwritten, when these scientific name or biological name 
are handwritten both genus generic name and species specific epithet are separately underlined what it is when the scientific name or biological name are handwritten in both the generic name genus specific epithet species are separately underlined example mangifera indica mangifera generic name with a capital m indica specific epithet with a small i are handwritten then they are separately underlined right now the last and next guideline of the icg is given is name of the author or scientist who identified the plant species or animal species for the first time and named it for the first time described it for the first time can be written right name of the author or scientist who identified or described or named the plant species or animal species for the first time can be written after specific epithet in an abbreviated form what it is the name of the author or scientist who identified and described and named the species for the first time can be written after the specific epithet that is at the end of the scientific name in an abbreviated form let us see what it is example mangifera indica right you see mandipera generic name with the capital m indica is a specific epithet with small i right when handwritten are separately underlined mandipera indica but the name of the scientist who discovered the mandipera indica species is linnaeus so his name is written at the end of the scientific name that is after specific epithet in an abbreviated form lin with the full stop there but the scientist name is not underlined right this is all about the icbn guidelines given for the binomial nomenclature first one scientific name or biological name should be latin origin and printed in italics form why well, latin origin beta latin is a dead language the scientific name or biological name consisting of two words or two components that is binomial the first word is generic name genus is a noun and always starts with a capital letter second word specific epithet is a species is an adjective always starts with a small letter for example scientific name of mammal is mangifera indica mangifera is generic name with a capital m indica is a specific epithet with small i when the scientific or biological name is handwritten, then both the generic name genus and specific of that species are separately underlined. Example, Mangifera indica are separately underlined. Mangifera is the generic name with capital M, indica is the specific epithet with small i. The last one is name of the author or scientist who identified this plant species or who described this plant species and named it for the first time can be written after the specific epithet that is at the end of scientific name in an abbreviated form. Example, Mangifera indica lin, right? This Mangifera indica species of a mango is first time identified by Linnaeus. you can get that right mandrifera generic name with a capital m indica specific epithet with a small i right both are underlined separately after the indica specific epithet at the end of scientific name we are writing the name of a scientist or author who named it for the first time in an abbreviated form that is Linnaeus lin dot right this is all about your icbn guidelines now let us see the taxonomical hierarchy classification in the next slide taxonomy is nothing but the process of classification of living organisms into different categories based on the characteristics right so those categories there are seven obligatory categories obligatory means must there are seven obligatory taxonomical categories forming the taxonomical hierarchy right there are seven obligatory taxonomical categories right forming the taxonomical hierarchy from upside to downside in the descending order how you should remember the taxonomical categories right example such as the king of london right he had invited some genius species of human beings all over the world to his kingdom for the feast and he has taken a group photo and he kept that photo as his dp of the social media account so the mnemonic to remember these seven obligatory taxonomical categories is king's dp shows class of genius species right the mnemonic to remember the seven obligatory taxonomical categories forming the taxonomical hierarchy is king's dp shows class of genius species right let us see what it is king's first one is kingdom 
right? Kingdom. This kingdom is the largest tag on our highest category, right? Largest tag on our highest category. Then afterwards, division for plants or phylum for animals, right? Then third one, class, fourth one, order, fifth one, family, sixth one, genus, that is generic name, and last seventh one is species, that is specific epithet, right? Specific epithet. This species specific epithet is the smallest taxon or lowest category. Lowest category. According to Linnaeus, this species is a basic unit of classification. This species is a basic unit of classification. What is species? Species are nothing but a group of morphologically similar individuals sharing the fundamental similarities, right? Group of individual organisms sharing the fundamental similarities, right? That is species. Species are nothing but a group of individual organisms sharing the fundamental similarities, right? And species is a basic unit of classification according to Linnaeus. So King's DP shows class of genus species, mnemonics, King's kingdom, largest taxon of highest category, division for plants, phylum for animals, class, order, family, genus, genetic name, and species specific epithet. This species is the smallest taxon, lowest category, and species is a basic unit of classification according to genus. Species is a group of individual organisms with fundamental similarities. Right? This is in the descending order. King's kingdom, DP, division and phylum, class of order family genius genus species s right so this is the mnemonic to remember this one obligatory taxonomical category forming taxonomical hierarchy if we see in the ascending order if we see in the ascending order from the species to the genus to the family to the order to the class to the division of to the kingdom as we move from species to the kingdom in the ascending order the similarities goes on decreasing. The similar characteristics goes on decreasing. The maximum category level where we can see the similarities among the living organisms is family. Up to family, up to family category level, we can see the similarities. From the order to the kingdom onwards, from the order onwards to the kingdom, we can see the aggregation of characters, right? From species to the family, we can see the similarities of the characteristics among the living organisms, right? Maximum category level, when we can see the similarities among the living organisms is family. From the order onwards of the kingdom, aggregation of characters can be seen. Group of species forms the genus, group of genus form the family, group of family form the order, group of order form the class, group of class forms the division of plants, phylum for animals, and group of division of phylum forms the Kingdom. Kingdom is the highest category, largest taxon, but where a species is the smallest taxon, lowest category, and basic unit of classification. As we move from species to the kingdom in an ascending order, the similarities, similar characteristics goes on decreasing, right? So this is all about your taxonomical categories or taxonomical hierarchy. For example, you see we have in species Leo, we have in species Paradas, and we are having species Tigris, right? We are having species Leo, Paradas, and Tigris to the same genus Panthera. 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 Right? Panthera is a genus showing species Leo, that is lion, Asiatic lion. Panthera Leo is lion. But whereas Panthera Paradas is leopard, cheetah, right? But whereas Panthera Tigris or Panthera Tigris is tiger, right? Tiger is the national animal of our country. So same genus can contain different number of species. Panthera, Leo, Panthera, Pardas, Panthera, Tigris. Panthera, Leo is lion, Panthera, Pardas is leopard, Panthera, Tigris is tiger, right? This is all about our species and genus, right? And our family, Solanaceae, right? 
our family solanesi shows three genera right solano petonia and datura solano petonia and datura how to remember spd of blocks in your chemistry spd spd are the genera which are kept in the family solanesi right these order these order palymodians we are having families solanesi and convolvulaceae solanesi and convolvulaceae based on the what floral characters based on what floral characters based on the floral characters this solanesi and convolvulaceae families are kept in the order polymodians so how you should remember this the mnemonic scp single cell protein s for solanesee c for convolvulaceae families are kept in the order polymodians based on the floral characteristics right so this is all about our taxonomical category let us see the next slide right so this is all about our obligatory taxonomical categories the mnemonic is ksdp shows class of genius species as the king of england london has invited all the genius species all over the world to his kingdom for the feast and he has taken a group photo and kept that photo as is dp in the social media account ksdp shows class of genius species kingdom division phylum class order family genus and species kingdom is the largest taxon highest category species is the lowest category smallest taxon according to linnaeus species is the basic unit of classification define species species are group of individual organisms with fundamental similarities right as we move from species to the kingdom upwards in an ascending order the similarities similar characteristics goes on decreasing right we can see the similarities maximum up to the level of category family from the order of the kingdom a relation of characters can be seen right group of species can be kept in genus such as panthera is the genus different species leo parrot tigris panthera leo is lion panthera parrot leopard panthera tigris tiger group of genera genus can be kept in family such as solanum petunia datura kept in solanesi family and group of families kept in kept in order such as solanesi family convolvulaceae family are kept in the order following you as based on the floral characters the mnemonic is scp single cell protein solanesi convolvulaceae polymodials as we go higher from species to kingdom the number of common characteristics goes on decreasing we can observe similarities in characteristics maximum up to the category level of family from order to kingdom onwards aggregation of characteristics are observed families are characterized on the basis of both vegetative and reproductive features of land species family solanesi consists of three genera solanum petunia datura the mnemonic is spd solanesi and convolvulaceae families are included in the order polymonials mainly based on the floral characters the mnemonic to remember this sentence is scp single cell protein s for solanesi and c for convolvulaceae families are included in the order p for polymonials mainly based on the floral characters order carnivora shows philidae and canidae families order primata shows monkey gorilla gibbon all are under the class mammalia under the phylum chordata consist of notochord and nerve cord under the kingdom animalia so this is all about our first and most yes topic first chapter living world inshallah hopefully you are going to get one mcq in the neat ug 2024 from this chapter and whatever i have discussed here the most high yield topic will definitely be there in your examination right you you people are going to remember me after seeing the question in the examination paper i hope so right agar video achhi lagi to like kare share kare mere channel asraria notes coaching classes ko subscribe kare hit the bell icon so that you people will get the notification as soon as possible i upload the video right so that you people will get benefited from my video lectures and you people are going to remember me for sure in the examination hall after seeing this question in your paper milte hain agle video mein with the another as topic another chapter till then take care on step